Welcome, dear friends of the Flat Earth and dear friends of the Round Earth at Plain Analyst. After my first video about the history of Flat Earth turned out to be a fairy tale video, in this second part I want to do a more factual video about the history of the Flat Earth in a historical sense. And I have found some exciting things. Well, the history of the Flat Earth does not start here in the Stone Age, nor in Stonehenge, as you might suppose. It starts here, in the 19th century. If Eric Dubey, in his video The History of Flat Earth, insinuates that his modern Flat Earth worldview is a continuation of the ancient world conceptions, then that's just a lie. Eric Dubey knows where the Flat Earth is coming from. The Flat Earth belief system was completely reinvented in 1865 by Samuel Robotham. Maybe I could say 1849, but I did not find anything of these first 16 pages anywhere. At Robotham's time, the Copernican Revolution and the heliocentric worldview were already widely recognized histories. There were relatively accurate clocks and the countries were more and more connected by railroads, where different time zones were everyday reality and above all a problem for the railway lines connecting the different time zones. These station clocks from Geneva, 1886 for example, show three different times, the Paris time, the Geneva time and the Bern time. It was the North American Railway Company that for the first time in 1883 introduced systematic time zones in the modern sense. But the ancient idea of a flat earth disk presupposed that the sun rises and sets at the same time all over the world. The ancient earth disk is therefore incompatible with the new time zones and belonged definitely to the past. Not NASA, Jesuits or Freemasons had been the end of the Flat Earth, but the time zones and the traffic by ship and rail around the whole world. Robotham was now trying with an artifice to save his personal Bible interpretation of Flat Earth Disc. Certainly not the only possible interpretation of the Bible and certainly not the only true one. 15 million Jews believe in the Old Testament and have no problem with a globular earth. 2 billion Christians, including 150 million of the biblical evangelical denominations, also have no problems. And even only a small part of the creationists believe in a flat earth. In his basic writing Zetetic Astronomy, he relies on the Bible, among other things. In the later issue of 1881, Robotham devotes a full 30-page chapter to philosophical and religious questions. For him, the question of the correctness of the Bible is a sacred question, as he writes here, and therefore he endlessly quotes passages from the Bible. By the way, Robotham was a contemporary of Darwin, and their publications alternated. Maybe they were even opponents. Robotham's trick was to turn the sun's path from vertical to horizontal. He was thus able to roughly consider the time zones, but not the exact sunrise and sunset times, nor the different angles at which the sun is visible from different parts of the earth. The visible orbit of the sun is composed of individual calculable points, always with a direction and a height above the horizon. Such a composite course would have to look completely different for a horizontally circulating sun than for a spinning ball. For the heliocentric model there are calculations in abundance. Their values were checked for accuracy day after day as ships navigated using the position of the sun and the stars by compass and sextants. What measurements could Robotham counter that? Each position of the sun must be measured from at least two different points of the earth 
to know its actual height and orbit, otherwise the third dimension is missing. So, theoretically one could easily prove a horizontal solar orbit. Of course, anyone who sets up a new theory must also prove it. So where are Robotham's measurements? Here, on page 75 is the answer, there is none. With no more than three sentences, Robotham established the horizontal orbit. Because the Earth is flat and because it looks like the Sun is describing an arc around us, it must be a circular orbit. That's all. But concluding from what we see to the real nature of the Sun orbit is not as simple as that. The ancient peoples also believed in a flat Earth. But their sun described a vertical semicircle, not a horizontal full circle. And as a further proof, Robotham adds the enthusiastic nature portrayal of the midnight sun by a captain near the North Pole. But the existence of the midnight sun is the only fact that is explained and accepted both by heliocentric and flat Earth worldview. This so-called proof is just worth nothing. Even after Robotham has been thinking for 16 years, nothing changes. In the third edition of 1881, he repeats essentially the same reasoning, almost literally. He decorates it only with further nature descriptions of the midnight sun. He does not give a single measurement. And that has remained the same until today. The horizontal orbit is plucked out of thin air and is a compromise between the time zones and Robotham's desired interpretation of the Bible. Today, 150 years later, Robotham's followers say they just don't know the height of their sun. But the truth is that they get different results from each measurement point. This would of course expose the invented theory of flat Earth with a horizontal orbit as a complete nonsense and is therefore concealed. Thus the sun height has only been measured by Slice Parkane with 23 participants and by Flo Plus with 39 participants and gave absurd results for flat Earth model and reasonable results for globe Earth. And that's what differentiates Robotham's flat Earth from the ancient flat Earth models. He included the entire globe and not just the limited view of ancient peoples, now with America, Australia and Antarctica. He considered time zones. He turned the sun orbit to the horizontal. And he has invented this ice wall of the Antarctica as alleged limitation of the Earth disk. By the way, I think he had never been there. Who was Robotham? We know nothing about his exact date of birth and very few about his job. He performed under the pseudonyms Parallax and Dr. Samuel Burley, his first names, but did not have a real doctorate as Eric Dubey would like to insinuate. He knew the Bible and was able to inspire listeners. But he dropped out of school at the age of nine, and there's no indication that he had any academic education. Dear spectators, you have just watched the second part of my series about the history of flat Earth. My conclusion from the research done here is the following. The flat Earth belief is not an ancient tradition, but was completely reinvented in 1865. Robotham. The inventor of flat earth belief was not a scientist, but a religious fantasist. The horizontal sun orbit is not the result of nature observation, but a failed attempt to adapt the flat earth to the new time zones. The main reason for the flat earth belief is a special religion with a peculiar special interpretation of the Bible. If Eric Dubey claims that his flat earth model is an ancient truth of the ancient peoples and has been changed by Freemasons or NASA over the past 500 or 1000 years by deliberate manipulation and re-education, that is a blatant lie. 
At the time, I had already read Samuel Robotham and William Carpenter's old 19... Eric Dubey is familiar with the origins of modern flat earth belief, for he learned it himself from Robotham's books of 1865 and 1881. If you want to know how the history of Robotham goes on, look at one of the other planned episodes as soon as they are translated, such as Robotham's idea of horizon curvature, Robotham's errors in calculating trajectories, or Robotham's wondrous new notions of perspective. If you subscribe to my channel, then you will also know immediately when the new parts will appear. Thanks for watching and see you soon.